Welcome to Startup Health Now, the weekly web show that celebrates the healthcare transformers and change makers reimagining health. My name is Unity Stokes, and today we are at the Wearable Tech and Digital Health Conference in San Francisco. We're going to be speaking with two executives from Takeda Pharmaceuticals. We have the Chief Digital Officer, Bruno Villatelle, and one of the Vice Presidents, Nicole Moad Nassar. We're going to be talking about what it's like for a pharmaceutical company, global pharmaceutical company, to be focusing on digital health innovation and how they're trying to work with early stage startups and entrepreneurs. Stick around, it's going to be a great show. It is the duty of leaders to lead, of the creative to create, of the daring to do. The free world expects leadership of us. Its fate and our fate depends upon our leadership. We are industrious, inventive, restless, with the fires that burn within us. Well, I say that nothing is easy, and the best things are the hardest. And all our troubles, all our immense difficulties, now and in the future, can I say, be solved if we have the will, the courage, well, welcome, Bruno and Nicole. It's wonderful to be with you here in San Francisco. Um, I thought we'd kick off the conversation by really learning um, who Takeda is, if you could maybe describe the organization and the mission. Start with you, Bruno. Yeah, thank you, Unity. Um, well, so Bruno Villotel, as you can guess from my accent, I'm not American. <laughs> I'm actually Swiss, and um, I have been working with uh, a number of uh, globally influencing companies in digital innovation and digital transformation capacity over the past many years. And I'm now serving as a chief uh, digital officer at Takeda. So talking about Takeda Unity, um, Takeda has uh, decided to embark on a, on a digital transformation journey, realizing that uh, digital technology combined with the best of healthcare uh, offers um, uh, incredible opportunities to, to advance uh, uh, the improvement of patients' lives. So we have assembled a team of life science and uh, marketing experts uh, who are basically working with partners um, around the world to basically uh, try and take um, um, you know, um, solutions for patients beyond the pill, as we, we used to say, um, and, and developing solutions that put patients at, at truly at the center. Because what, what do you guys see as the opportunity? Um, you know, why is digital important to a pharmaceutical company? Well, my name is Nicole Moad Nassar, and my experience with Takeda is as a commercial leader in a variety of therapeutic areas. But today, I focus at Takeda on external partnerships, primarily digital technologies and big data. And to your question, why would a company be concerned about that? Well, we really want to put the patient at the center of everything we do and at the center of their care. And you can't do that without embracing technology. We in the U.S. are, are focusing on some strategic intents for our company, one of which is commercial innovation. And again, you cannot commercially innovate in the industry unless you embrace technology. So we really think it's probably the best way to create the linkages between industry and providers and academia and most importantly the patient to allow them to coordinate their care. And what are some of the lessons learned? You guys are very active in the ecosystem today. What are some of the lessons learned of working with uh, emerging companies? Oftentimes, one of the things we see is um, when a large company is learning to work with a, a much smaller emerging startup, uh, there's a lot to be learned there. What are, what are some of the things you guys have learned? Well, I think the, the first thing we are truly excited about is to, to, to be in these exciting times of, of, of being a transformative time. No discussion about that. And when it comes to, to the lessons learned, um, we think that um, having a solid partnership network around you is one of the very vital uh, critical success factors to spark innovation that will make a, a meaningful difference. Uh, so building this, uh, this partnership and, and learning, to your point, learning how to work with these partners. We think that um, a certain number of criteria are absolutely uh, critical. We, we are looking for partnerships that will be highly collaborative. And um, even if that sounds a bit, a, bit, a bit surprising, we truly want to, these partnerships to be approached with a startup mindset, mm. with partners that will bring a mix of skills that can be complementary or disruptive at times, so that together we can uh, challenge the status quo. Uh, that's really what we're looking at. 
So from the very beginning, a startup, what, what should they be thinking about or expecting when they're trying to, to do a really good job with collaborating with, with Takeda? I think one of the things to acknowledge is that industry and entrepreneurs speak fundamentally different languages. Uh, industry comes at it with the mindset of proprietary and, and, um, and regulatory hurdles and some of the challenges that we face knowing how the healthcare system works. And so I think an appreciation of the different uh, from uh, mindsets both, from, from both, both sides. sides is really important. And at Takeda, we're in the midst of a transformation. We're a 234-year-old company trying to go from a Japanese company to a global global company with a Japanese heritage, and we really believe digital is an enabler of that transformation. So we like to think of ourselves as a mid-sized pharmaceutical company that's the entrepreneurial friendly fit, that we, be we believe we can bridge those fundamentally different languages, be more open, uh, be more flexible in terms of our terms as we see digital as a, a key to our own transformation. So there's, there's an army of ent entrepreneurs out here in the ecosystem and um, if you were to ask them to solve some of your challenges or they could be helping you, um, what, what would they be doing to, to help your journey and to help your mission? What are some of the big, big solutions you're looking for? So the, you know, the intersection of high science and technology is so exciting. Um, to see all the remote patient monitoring that's being done to connect patients mm -hmm. to their family and to providers, to see how um, behavior modification is advancing. I've seen some great apps out there now that combine coaching with telehealth to fill voids where we have access to care right now and or to provide um, access to physicians where there's long times to get a referral. That's very exciting because we understand and I think that the perspective that industry brings is we've got years of experience with deep commercial insights and understanding of how the healthcare system works. And when we partner with the entrepreneur, we can kind of un unlock those interventions in the patient journey that can allow a patient to live better than they ever thought possible. And I'm really seeing some terrific advancements in the area of mental health and others where they're combining all of the advances of digital for the patient. And you, as a global company, um, are, you, are you seeing uh, this innovation happen in a particular region more than others? Are you seeing this really as a global phenomenon? What's your, your take on what you're seeing out in the marketplace today in terms of health innovation, digital health innovation? We think that's uh, probably one of the greatest opportunity. We are obviously here in San Francisco, which is one of the very, very hot innovation hub in the world. But we are truly leveraging our global footprint to engage with uh, innovators and, 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 and research teams around the world. Obviously, Japan is, is our home, we as, as, as Takeda. But we're also engaging with, uh, with teams uh, in Europe, in Asia, uh, and across the US here, just to mention a few. Uh, we think that convergence uh, is not just something that is basically um, um, uh, offering um, uh, opportunities around the convergence of technologies, convergence of data, but it, we think that there is a convergence of, of, of patient unmet needs mm. that can be addressed. And, and um, if the priorities might be different, with a top priority in the US today, maybe a lower priority in Asia too, mm -hmm. currently, we think that there is an opportunity to work together and. We at Takeda, we believe that we can play a role in helping these innovators work together and addressing global challenges. Mm. And as you think about the future, you know, it's, it was interesting to hear you say Takeda is a 230, 40 year old company, which is extraordinary really to think about um, in the age of startups where companies are, you know, just a few days or months or weeks old. Um, how do you think about the future? What does the future look like? What are your predictions um, for how pharma changes, how organizations like yours change as a result of this wave of innovation that's coming into the market? I'll start with that. I think uh, from a prediction, I, I've, I've read and seen and talked to a lot of people that predict the transformation to happen tomorrow to the impact not happening for years. And I would argue that I think it's going to happen sooner than we think. A lot of the obstacles that people feel are difficult to overcome now, like regulatory hurdles under privacy concerns, I think the demand to solve them are going to be um, so strong because the patient engagement is so high. I was reading statistics recently that you know more than 25% of elderly over 60 
65 are on a smartphone. More than 50% of those over 50 are on a smartphone. When you're collecting data like that, you can't ignore it. And so I think the movement that's going to impact the industry and all the stakeholders will be sooner than many are predicting. Yeah, it's happening very, very quickly. D do things seem different to you today than, say, five or ten years ago uh, from the perspective of industry? For sure, from the perspective of industry, there's some key things that have happened that have really um, put this forward at a much more rapid pace. Um, EMR systems have been adopted because of ACA legislation, as you all know, and so EMR systems now are collecting data at rates that we wouldn't have thought possible five years ago. And so the richness of the data density that we're living in in this environment is giving us such opportunities to solve problems that previously we thought were too difficult to solve. And I think what's more exciting is it's bringing stakeholders where their goals were not aligned, they're aligning goals now. So industry might have had a difficult time talking to a provider mm. or an academic institution because we might come at the approach different or have different company um, objectives. But when you're working with a common data set in a value-based care setting, all of the goals are now aligned. So it seems like there's this theme of collaboration and that sort of goes, goes back to your first uh, point as, as one of your imperatives. Uh, I thought we'd shift gears a little and ask some, some fun questions uh, about um, any favorite technologies or apps or tools that you each find yourself using um, on a regular basis that can be digital health or just regular technology. Start with you, Bruno. Yeah, I was, I was quoting recently that I probably counted something like 10 pieces of wearable technologies at home that are no longer collecting data but collecting dust in a drawer right, somewhere. Right, right. Um, you tried them, you were an early adopter and now they're collecting dust. Them. Yeah. I think um, I, I, I found one that, uh, that suits me because it is engaged in, in, in my daily life, it is embedded in what I need. That's the it Apple is, Watch there? It is. Okay. It is relevant uh, to, to me in, as, as a traveler, as, as, a, as a worker. Uh, when I'm doing sports, so I think uh, this is uh, a great, a great fit to what I need, because it, it it fits it fits my needs, and I and I, by the way, believe that this is something we should expect from these wearable devices that they talk to you as an individual and they, they make sense for you personally. So that's something I would uh, I would certainly recommend. Okay, and Nicole, do you have any favorite apps or technologies that you find yourself using all the time? Well, as we travel a lot for our work, I have to say that I think the United app is incredibly user-friendly, but from a digital health perspective, I'm a, I stay active being the ma a mom of two small boys, and someone recently introduced me to Kinza, and oh. I was never good at taking their temperature, and so That's this a smart allows thermometer. you, it's a smart thermometer, but what it also allows you to do is track trends in your local school district, so if you see um, perhaps strep throat breaking out or other things you can track and see symptoms that are developing in your in your area and so I think that's really cool oh, that's fantastic and last question um, health is obviously a part of what you do in your day-to-day -day business lives but how do you each stay healthy in your personal life Bruno uh, well, like Nicole, traveling a lot, so uh, trying to take positively and enjoying jet lag is right. <laughs> probably... It's now a lifestyle. Right. <laughs> uh, golfing and jogging are part of my routine to, to try and, and stay healthy. Um, and that's, that's basically my recipe, and uh, I would love to do more, but that's already a beginning. And for me, it's definitely chasing after the two boys, staying active with soccer. I'm learning to play basketball. Um, personally, I love tennis, uh, but it's always a challenge to work around the boys' schedules. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you both so much for all you do for the ecosystem and, and sponsoring uh, the wellness, uh, or, sorry, the, the wearable tech conference. Um, it's great to, to collaborate and to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. We will see you soon. Thank you.